Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to do a basic physics simulation using Modo. I'm using Modo version 901. So uh, first of all let's create a floor. So I'm on the modeling layout and I'm just going to click on the cube and just drag out a very basic floor. And I'm going to make the size 20 meters by 20 meters and just give it a thickness of 0 0.1. Okay, just very basic stuff. And um, let's just call this floor. Okay, then I'm going to press N to create a new mesh and let's just call this box. And then I'm going to create some boxes. So I'm going to click on the cube again, draw out a very simple cube like that. And let's make this one one meter by one meter by one meter and let's just center that so i'm going to set the position to zero 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 and uh, then just press q to get out of that and i'm just going to move it into place so let's just move it up a little bit so it's not on or inside the floor actually just set it here in the middle somewhere for now that's good enough and then here on the side i'm going to click on duplicate and then i'm going to click on array just to create a wall of boxes so to activate the array, just click in the viewport and you'll see it's going to update your uh, your view basically with your array settings. So currently this is set to 8 by 5 by 2. So I'm going to increase this 2 amount to 3 uh, just to get a few more boxes in there, something like that. And um, next what I want to do is I want to create a little bit of a gap between these boxes. Um, usually it just works a bit better if you're doing uh, physics simulations. So um, as you can see, we've got a offset of one meter and um, that means they are actually sitting on top of each other. There's no gap between them. So I'm going to change the offset to 1.1 1 .1, uh, for the X, the Y and the Z, something like that. OK, so you can see we've got a bit of a gap. It might be a little bit too big, um, but for this uh, tutorial, that should be fine. And uh, let's just zoom out of here again. And um, what you'll see on the side now in our item list, we've got all these boxes that the array actually created. So I want to group them all together. So let's just move the floor above that box. And then we're going to click and hold in shift and just click on the last box. And then we're going to press control G just to group them. And let's call this uh, wall. Right, that's cool. And uh, what you can do now, if you double click on this group, it will basically select all the items or all the meshes inside that group. And I'm just going to move them uh, by pressing W and just move them into place, something like that. And lastly, I'm going to press N again to create another mesh and I'm going to call this, uh, let's just call this ball for now. And I'm going to go back to basic and sphere, hold in control, just draw out a sphere and uh, then I'm going to move that into place. So as you can see, my pivot is currently not in the center of the sphere. So to fix that, just go to edit here at the top go to center to bounding box and click on center. Okay, so that will basically just center the pivot point and uh, let's just move it down maybe to around here. That should be fine. All right, next we want to go to our setup layout here at the top to uh, do the simulation. And um, I'm going to select my floor first and then you're on the side, make sure you're on dynamics and then I'm going to click set static rigid body. All right, then I'm going to double click on my wall group to select all my boxes and I'm going to set these to active rigid bodies and uh, then I'm going to click on the ball and I'm going to set that to an active rigid body as well. You can obviously do a kinematic rigid body for the ball if you have some pre animation on that, but I'm just going to add a dynamic animation for this ball. So let's just quickly test our animation by clicking on this um, little play button here at the bottom. And you'll see that everything will basically just fall down the ball will fall and it should stop on the floor plane right so let's just stop that quickly okay so we're going to add some dynamic animation to the sphere so with it selected go down to the dynamic tab and then expand impulse and um, basically we want to add a bit of animation in the z axis and if we want to move it this way it should be in the negative z um, axis okay so basically we're going to change the impulse on the negative Z so I'm going to create let's say minus five here and let's just play that back and see what we have of course you can see that ball is actually moving in the right direction and it's probably going to stop before it actually gets to the boxes so let's just stop that and I'm going to make this minus 30 maybe let's try that okay and then you can see you've got some animation here. you've got the boxes falling um, they're actually falling off the floor, they're breaking apart, which is pretty damn cool. Um, so as you can see, the ball is not heavy enough, so let's just stop that quickly. And with the ball selected again, I'm going to expand mass. 
and we're gonna change this to local mass and currently it's set to one kilogram. So I'm gonna change this to, let's make it 50 kilograms. Let's see how that works. Okay, now we obviously need to increase the amount of impulse on that um, Z axis. So I'm gonna make this minus 300 and let's just click on the play button again. Okay, maybe let's make it minus 900. Okay, so that's a really cool uh, simulation. Let me just show you guys some other options that you can play with. So with your sphere selected, you can basically go to your dynamics tab and um, under collision, you've got your bounce and your friction and your stickiness and also the margin, uh, which you can play around to get some different effects. Uh, you also have some presets here like glass, stone, wood, rubber, plastic, and steel, etc., uh, which is pretty cool. And um, let's say you're happy with that simulation that you previewed now and you want to bake that animation in. So all you have to do is go to uh, Dynamics here at the top and then you click on Cache Simulation and then you set your frame range and click on OK. And that will basically bake in that simulation. So if we click Play now, you'll see that we've got that animation baked in. Um, it's not simulating it anymore, it's just playing through our animation. And as you can see, it's pretty cool. Uh, boxes falling around. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty cool stuff. And um, now you can go ahead and add some textures and render out your animation. Cool, so I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also remember to click on that subscribe button if you want to be notified of new weekly tutorials. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers, bye.